Welcome to Observing the Anomaly. Today's episode is the science of anti-gravity, faster than light travel, and space-time metric engineering according to the Defense Intelligence Reports, or DIRDS. The DIRDS are a great source of scientific information and there are at least five of them dedicated to the subjects of anti-gravity, faster than light travel, and space-time metric engineering. The DIRDS cover a lot of topics, but this may be the most covered topic albeit a bit redundantly. I've combed through them all and will try to give an easy summary of the contents as well as additional information about the advances in materials science that makes this subject a surprisingly realistic area of research. The relevant five papers can be found in the description. Bridging theory with observation. I want to start by saying there is a lot of redundancy in these papers, which actually makes it more difficult to cover the subject. The important takeaways are that these are currently purely theoretical concepts that appear to potentially be possible according to our best understanding of physics and this is well documented by peer review. These ideas are speculative because they are only predicted by theory at the moment and even if possible theoretically, they still require certain technological advances that for all we know are not even possible. That being said we are making certain advances with technology in the lab that actually does allow us to potentially better analyze the feasibility of these ideas and perhaps even one day achieve them. Theoretical approaches. There are many different theoretical approaches to these concepts, but many either include more rigorous analysis or are burdened by requiring massive objects and or energies on the scale of entire planets or stars. For this reason the approaches can be narrowed down to anti-gravity, transversible wormholes and warp drives. Anti-gravity is what it sounds like, a force that opposes gravity. Most of us have heard of wormholes from science fiction where space-time is bent and punctured to get somewhere without having to actually travel the full distance. Warp drives essentially function by enveloping the skin of a craft with space-time fabric and manipulating it to create a traveling bubble that moves space-time itself rather than moving the craft through it. Exotic matter, and negative energy. A common theme throughout the papers is the use of negative energy or sub-vacuum energy. These words are interchangeable. Negative energy is not something that is purely theoretical, but has been observed in the lab already. It's well established to be very real despite its apparent contradictory nature. The existence of negative energy can also sometimes be attributed to exotic matter, but this is a loose term that can be applied to things that we know how to create in the lab. Below is a portion of the introduction to quantum tomography of negative energy states in the vacuum. Future aerospace vehicles could have an advanced propulsion system that uses negative quantum vacuum energy to modify the spacetime geometry in the immediate vicinity surrounding the vehicle in order to induce faster than light motion via traversable wormholes or warp drives, or even levitation via anti-gravity. These exotic propulsion concepts are well known in mainstream general relativity and quantum field theory research. The notion of a physical state with negative energy is not familiar in the realm of classical physics. However, it is not rare in quantum field theory to have quantum states with negative energy density or a negative energy flux. Even for a quantum scalar field in the flat Minkowski spacetime, it can be proved that the existence of quantum states with negative energy density is inevitable. Although all known forms of classical matter have non-negative energy density, it is not so in quantum field theory. A general quantum state can be a superposition of particle number eigenstates and may have a negative expectation value of energy density in certain spacetime regions due to quantum coherence effects. These considerations remain true even for quantum fields in a curved spacetime where the effects of gravitational fields, or equivalently, accelerations, can be observed due to the mass of astronomical bodies or the motions of astronomical bodies. There are two key examples of specially prepared quantum vacuum states that are known to produce small amounts of negative energy density in the laboratory. These are the well-known Casimir effect and the squeezed vacuum states of the electromagnetic field. The former is a static quantum vacuum effect while the latter is a time-domain quantum vacuum effect. There are several other examples of special quantum vacuum or particle states that produce negative energy density, but they are beyond the scope of this report because they remain mathematical curiosities or are not practicable to implement in the laboratory in the foreseeable future. We already make small amounts of negative energy in the laboratory via the Casimir effect and squeezed electromagnetic vacuum states, 
but we do not yet know if we can access larger amounts for extended periods of time over extended spatial distributions for the purpose of modifying spacetime for aerospace propulsion applications. It will be necessary to first explore the quantum nature of the Casimir effect and squeezed electromagnetic vacuum states to determine whether we can measure and spatially map their negative energy density. This is a necessary first step to take before beginning any study on producing large quantities of negative energy because we will first need to know how to measure and spatially map negative energy in order to properly control it after producing it. This is the motivation for this report. This paper, as well as some of the others, identifies both the Casimir effect and squeezed vacuum states as known ways to produce negative energy in the lab. The Casimir effect is not expected to produce enough energy to be effective for any propulsion system so we are only left with the squeezed vacuum states as candidates for exotic matter for these advanced propulsion concepts. However, the Casimir effect is worth measuring for analytic purposes. The motivation of the report stated is to take the first steps in measuring negative energy density in the lab in order to properly control it. It's also necessary to measure it in order to properly analyze how feasible the concept is. For instance, we don't yet know how much negative energy can be tapped from squeezed vacuum states so we are not in a position to determine if it's impossible or feasible. The paper suggests this is possible using quantum optical homodyne tomography, which I'm not going to bother to attempt to explain because it's admittedly too technical and over my head. My best understanding is that it's a clever way to use light and quantum effects to map the energy flux. Part of the process is the implementation of balanced homodyne detectors. Below is a very interesting portion of the conclusion. We recommend that a research and development program be implemented to modify the design and operation of the time domain balanced homodyne detector device in order to provide this important data. It will be necessary to develop and commercialize a portable time domain BHD device for the purpose of detecting, measuring, and spatially mapping the sub vacuum negative energy regions produced by a putative pulse or, a C, negative energy generator that might be used for engineering the spacetime surrounding an aerospace platform for propulsion purposes. A number of modified time domain balanced homodyne detector devices could also be assembled in a sensor array for surveillance and detection of any anomalous aerospace platforms that might use engineered spacetime effects for propulsion. The paper concludes with a recommendation that a modified design be tested to map negative energy density and even states that it could be assembled in an array for surveillance and detection of anomalous aerospace platforms. That's very interesting both for advancing the work of determining feasibility of these advanced propulsion systems as well as potentially detecting them. This paper is over 10 years old so I took it upon myself to try to investigate if the recommended research ever happened and I discovered a paper written by Eric W. Davis titled Faster Than Light Space Warps, Status and Next Steps a few years later where he covered much of the same subjects and claimed that a study should be initiated to test the davies autuil analysis using quantum optical tomography in order to elucidate the response of physical particle detectors to laboratory sources of negative energy densities, fluxes. EarthTech International, Inc. and P. Marecki are in the planning stages of developing Marecki's proposed balanced homodyne detector Casimir cavity experiment for this purpose. So, it appears EarthTech International, which is comprised of Hal Putthoff and Eric Davis if I'm not mistaken, and P. Marecki were planning to carry out the research using the modified detectors on Casimir cavities in 2012. That was about 10 years ago. I'm not sure if anything else has been published on it and I'm not sure why there is no research on this happening in academia. Maybe there is and I'm not aware of it. Quasiparticles can be exotic matter, phonons, black hole lasers, and negative effective mass made in the lab. I know this is where some people will accuse me of word salad, but please bear with me because although I'm aware this sounds like sci-fi, I can assure you I'm not pulling a rabbit out of my you know what and I understand if that's your initial reaction. In physics, quasi-particles and collective excitations are closely related emergent phenomena arising when a microscopically complicated system such as a solid behaves as if it contained different weakly interacting particles in vacuum. This includes phonons, magnons, plasmons, polarons, excitons, rotons, skyrmions, spinons and many others.
The phonon is a collective excitation associated with the vibration of atoms in a rigid crystal structure. It is a quantum of a sound wave. Phonons have been predicted to create negative energy, however, I'm not sure if it's been confirmed. There are predictions that phonons may have a non-negligible mass and be affected by gravity just as standard particles are. In particular, phonons are predicted to have a kind of negative mass and negative gravity. They are also predicted to play a key role in superconductivity. Three separate papers published in 2018-19 on this work can be found on wiki in the sources. They are highly technical. One in particular stands out to me. It states, we show that the commonly accepted statement that sound waves do not transport mass is only true at linear order. Using effective field theory techniques, we confirm the result found in for zero temperature superfluids, and extend it to the case of solids and ordinary fluids. We show that, in fact, sound waves do carry mass in particular, gravitational mass. This implies that a sound wave not only is affected by gravity but also generates a tiny gravitational field, an aspect not appreciated thus far. Our findings are valid for non-relativistic media as well, and could have intriguing experimental implications. I became interested in this area of research after hearing about the appointment of Dr. Kirkpatrick to the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, AARO. Dr. Kirkpatrick wrote his PhD thesis on phonons titled, Nonlinear and Non-Equilibrium Phonon Dynamics of Rare Earth Doped Fluoride Crystals. I'm not focusing specifically on the fluoride crystals as the bigger picture of the thesis is demonstrating an understanding of phonon dynamics, specifically nonlinear and non-equilibrium, which is what is predicted to create negative energy states. It appears their nonlinearity creates parametric down conversion and squeezed states, according to the literature. The DIRDs don't specifically reference quasi particles or phonons but do mention resonant crystal cavities. There are also DIRDs that cover metamaterials and spintronics, which appear to have some crossover as well. The point is that quasi particles such as phonons can represent the exotic matter that we know is necessary for advanced propulsion concepts. The use and advancement of metamaterials also makes this a rich area of study for this subject. In 2021 researchers successfully created a black hole laser in the lab. This is a quantum circuit that simulates a black hole in order to better understand Hawking radiation. It's important to point out that this is an analog and no actual black hole was created. However, it does highlight just how advanced we are becoming in creating exotic matter that could potentially create the negative energies necessary for advanced propulsion concepts such as anti-gravity, traversable wormholes and warp drives. In 2017 a paper was published concerning the creation of negative effective mass in the laboratory. Don't forget to check the show notes in the description for sources. If you enjoyed this video please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, if you wish to support my work, look for the Patreon link.